Well, I was thinking about this. It's a long, long time ago, of course, and I studied architecture in the early 70s, and I would have become aware of Norman's work and Richard Rogers, you know, Team Four at that time, probably through the photographs of Richard Einzig. I don't know whether you've come across him. He was a great architectural photographer at that time and did a lot of Norman's work and Richard's work. Um, and I was obviously besotted with architecture. I was studying architecture and photography. Never intended to become a photographer, but that, that's another story. Um, and so I would have come across Creek Veen, I think, in Cornwall, that house that they did together. Um, uh, little knowing that I would re-photograph it in about 2001, I think, for, for uh, one of Norman's books. So that, that's probably how the initial um, knowledge of Norman Foster came to me. I didn't photograph um, a Foster building probably until the Renault Centre in 1983, 1984. My dates won't be accurate, but some, sometime like that. So that's how it all began. I think it wasn't until I took his portrait in 1989. Um, I think, I don't usually do portraits either, I'm not very comfortable with people. And um, I probably took it, for, I was probably commissioned by a magazine, but I can't remember which magazine. So that's the first time I would have met him. And then I probably didn't meet him personally until, um, I'm trying to remember when I photographed the apartment, you know, the, the apartment in, uh, in London, and that would have probably been 1998, something like that. And then Villa Lavoie was probably 2000 and something, 2005, something like that. So those would have been the only times I came into personal contact with Norman. Well, as I say, I don't work directly with him. I mean, it's wonderful in a way, because I think he sort of respects the way I work and just lets me get on with it. He's never directed me at all. In fact, with the Reichstag, which is one of my favourite projects, um, we were there, he commissioned a lot of photographers and there was always, you know, there was someone to do the portraiture of people involved with the project and someone to do this aspect or that aspect. And then when it came to me, it was, Richard, you just do whatever you like. So <laughs> I took that as a compliment, I don't know. I'm just fascinated by trying to tell the stories of buildings um, spatially through photography. It's just what I love to do. Um, and you don't really sort of go for trying to get the iconic shot. In my case, I don't. I try to tell the story and the iconic shots of buildings crop up in the telling of that story, especially trying to move from one space to another space and trying to capture the feelings of spaces through architectural photography. As I say, the Reichstag was a great experience and spending time at the project was very, very informative and one was able to absorb the feeling of the building and to record it in that way. So spending time, I think, is always important with a project. Um, I think, again, probably photographers now aren't given enough time. They're expected to do everything very quickly. I think even more exciting for me, because it was one of the first buildings I ever photographed, would have been uh, the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank. And I was in Australia for a couple of months, and then I traveled back via Hong Kong and uh, started photographing. And it was just my first experience of, probably the first time I went to Hong Kong. And it was just an extraordinary experience, you know, great architecture, fantastic sort of uh, position, and uh, it, was very, it was a very exciting time for me.